The Origin of Lebanon, Indiana, the Bible, and its Prophetic History Lebanon is a land that, although relatively small in geographic terms, occupies a significant place in biblical history and the prophetic tradition of the scriptures. Since ancient times, this region has been known for its majestic mountains, famous cedars, and bustling coastal cities. However, beyond its natural beauty and cultural richness, Lebanon carries a deep history. Marked by its relevance in biblical narratives, the interactions between Israel and neighboring nations, and the prophecies that point both to destruction and redemption. The relationship between Lebanon and the Bible is multifaceted. Lebanon, its cities, and its natural resources are repeatedly mentioned in the scriptures, from the earliest books of the Old Testament to references in the New Testament. To better understand Lebanon's importance in the Bible, it is essential to explore its origins, the characters involved, its prophecies, and the lasting impact of this land on God's people and His divine plan of redemption. The Symbolic Significance of Lebanon, Indiana, the Bible Lebanon's geography and natural resources played an important role in the history of the Middle East, especially during biblical times. The word Lebanon appears several times in the scriptures, always with great relevance. Derived from a Semitic root meaning white, the name likely refers to the snow-capped mountains that dominate the region's landscape. These mountains, especially Mount Lebanon, became symbols of strength and resilience, while its cedar forests were revered for their grandeur and value. The cedar tree, found in the forests of Lebanon, was not just a symbol of natural beauty, but also of prosperity, power, and pride. In the Bible, the cedars of Lebanon are mentioned on several occasions as metaphors for powerful kingdoms or proud leaders who, in their greatness, would eventually be brought down by divine judgment. Isaiah and Ezekiel, two important prophets, use cedars as symbols of human greatness and the inevitable fall of those who exalt themselves above God. For example, in Isaiah 2 verse 13, we read about how God's judgment would be manifest against all the cedars of Lebanon, lofty and lifted up, and against all the oaks of Bashan, a passage that connects these trees with human pride and self-sufficiency. Here, the cedars of Lebanon are not merely majestic trees, but a representation of the pride and arrogance of nations and individuals who fail to acknowledge the sovereignty of God. By cutting down the cedars, the prophet is prophesying the fall of those who rise up against the Lord. The relationship between Lebanon and the Kingdom of Israel In the history of the Old Testament, Lebanon and its inhabitants often interacted with the people of Israel. The cedar forests of Lebanon were particularly important to Israel for both practical and symbolic reasons. During the reign of King Solomon, the third king of Israel and son of David, the cedars of Lebanon were crucial for the construction of the temple in Jerusalem. 1 Kings 5 describes the agreement between Solomon and Hiram, king of Tyre, a Phoenician city located on the coast of Lebanon. Hiram supplied Solomon with large quantities of cedar wood, as well as skilled carpenters and workers, for the construction of the temple, a project of immense spiritual and cultural importance to the people of Israel. In return, Solomon provided Hiram with large quantities of wheat and olive oil, abundant resources in Israel. This alliance between Solomon and Hiram is a remarkable example of cooperation between Israel and its neighbors. Despite religious and cultural differences, this relationship showed that God could use even foreign nations to fulfill His purposes. The construction of the temple with cedars from Lebanon was not only an architectural achievement, it was a symbol that the resources and wealth of neighboring nations could be used to glorify God. Additionally, Solomon built the Palace of the Forest of Lebanon, a palace adorned with cedar wood, which served as an extension of his royal complex in Jerusalem. This building was named after the cedar forests that were so highly valued for their beauty and durability. The cedars, with their height and majesty, also symbolized the glory and power of Solomon's kingdom which, like the cedars, seemed destined to last forever. However, as we will see, neither Solomon's glory, nor the cedars of Lebanon, nor the alliances with neighboring nations were permanent in the face of God's judgment. Prophecies against Tyre and Sidon, pride and fall. While Lebanon had a peaceful relationship with Israel during Solomon's reign, 
This did not last forever. The cities of Tyre and Sidon, located on the coast of Lebanon, became symbols of pride, wealth, and idolatry. These Phoenician cities were known for their dominance in maritime trade and immense wealth. However, this prosperity led to a growing sense of self-sufficiency and a rejection of God's authority. The prophet Ezekiel, in particular, delivered severe warnings against Tyre and Sidon. Ezekiel 28 contains a prophecy against the king of Tyre, who prided himself on his wisdom and wealth, believing himself to be divine. Ezekiel compared the fall of the king of Tyre to the fall of Satan, who also tried to exalt himself above God and was cast down. This prophecy of Ezekiel has been viewed by many Christian scholars as reflecting Satan's rebellion and fall, using the king of Tyre as an analogy for spiritual pride. The fall of Tyre was prophesied in vivid and dramatic terms. Ezekiel described how Tyre's walls and towers would be demolished, its wealth plundered, and its inhabitants scattered. This prophecy was partially fulfilled when Alexander the Great conquered Tyre in 332 BC. The destruction of Tyre serves as a reminder of divine judgment against those who place their trust in wealth and power rather than in God. Sidon, in turn, did not escape God's judgment either. Though a smaller city compared to Tyre, Sidon was also known for its idolatry and moral corruption. In Ezekiel 28 verses 20 to 23, God declares that he will bring judgment on Sidon for its betrayal of Israel and its promotion of idolatrous practices. Sidon is yet another example of how pride and idolatry, when left unchecked, attract divine judgment. However, it is important to note that, although the prophecies against Tyre and Sidon are severe, they also carry a message of hope. In Ezekiel 28 verses 25 to 26, God promises to restore the nation of Israel after the destruction of its enemies, including Tyre and Sidon. This suggests that, despite judgment, there is always an opportunity for redemption for those who repent and return to God. Jesus in Lebanon The Expansion of the Gospel Message Lebanon's connection to God's plan of redemption does not end in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we find Jesus visiting the regions of Tyre and Sidon during a significant moment in his ministry. This event is narrated in Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28 and Mark 7 verses 24 to 30, where Jesus encounters a Syrophoenician woman who pleads for his help in casting a demon out of her daughter. This encounter is significant for several reasons. First, the woman was a Gentile, which placed her outside the covenant between God and Israel. However, her remarkable faith and persistence impressed Jesus, leading him to perform the miracle of healing. Jesus' response to the woman, that even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table, symbolizes the future expansion of the gospel to the Gentiles. Jesus, who came first for the children of Israel, here reveals that his message and healing power would eventually reach those outside the original covenant. The fact that Jesus traveled to the region of Tyre and Sidon, two cities known for their history of idolatry and corruption, shows that even the most distant and rebellious places were not beyond the reach of God's grace. By healing the Syrophoenician woman's daughter, Jesus demonstrated that redemption was not only for the Jews, but for all nations, including the inhabitants of Lebanon. The Prophetic Relevance of Lebanon, Indiana Future Eschatology in addition to its historical and symbolic importance in the Old and New Testaments, Lebanon also plays a crucial role in future prophetic restoration. In several prophetic passages, such as Isaiah 60 verse 13, Lebanon's resources, particularly its cedars, are mentioned as adorning the sanctuary of the Lord. This prophecy is seen by many scholars as having both a literal and symbolic application. In the restoration of Jerusalem after the Babylonian exile, Lebanon's natural resources were used to rebuild the temple and the city. However, many interpreters see this prophecy as having a broader eschatological dimension, pointing to the final restoration at the end of time. In this view, Lebanon's cedars symbolize not only the physical reconstruction of Jerusalem, but also the ultimate glorification of God's creation. This eschatological vision of Lebanon is reinforced in passages such as Isaiah 35 verses 1 to 2, 
which described the transformation of the desert into a fertile and blooming land, where the glory of Lebanon will be seen. This text speaks of the future restoration of God's people and the renewal of creation when God's kingdom is fully established on earth. Lebanon and God's Redemptive Plan – A Message for Today When we consider Lebanon's role in biblical history, we find rich symbolism and lessons that extend far beyond its ancient context, offering spiritual truths that resonate deeply with us today. Lebanon, with its majestic mountains and vast natural resources, was often regarded as a symbol of great strength, prosperity, and natural beauty. The towering cedars of Lebanon were famous across the ancient world for their durability, beauty, and symbolic connection to power. However, this image of grandeur was coupled with another, darker reality, Lebanon's role in promoting idolatry and rebellion against God. Through the lens of biblical prophecy and history, Lebanon becomes a case study in the dangers of pride and self-sufficiency, but it also offers a powerful message of hope and redemption for individuals, communities, and nations alike. Lebanon's biblical history provides a stark warning about the dangers of pride and idolatry. The cities of Tyre and Sidon, once powerful centers of commerce and wealth, became notorious for their arrogance and moral corruption. As these cities prospered, they increasingly relied on their wealth, military strength, and political alliances rather than on the guidance of God. Their leaders, like the king of Tyre, even claimed divinity for themselves, epitomizing the ultimate act of rebellion against the Creator. The Bible repeatedly warns that when people or nations place their trust in earthly power and material wealth, they are walking a dangerous path. In Proverbs 16 verse 18, it is written that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The history of Lebanon illustrates this principle vividly. The prophets Ezekiel and Isaiah both delivered prophetic judgments against Tyre and Sidon forecasting their downfall as a direct consequence of their pride and idolatry. Ezekiel's depiction of the king of Tyre as a figure whose pride led him to claim godlike status parallels the fall of Satan himself. In this narrative, Lebanon's leaders exemplify what happens when humanity exalts itself at the expense of acknowledging God's sovereignty. Today, this lesson remains highly relevant. In modern society, the temptation to rely on wealth, status, and human achievement is as strong as ever. Nations, businesses, and individuals alike are often drawn into a cycle of self-sufficiency, believing that economic success or personal achievement can provide lasting security and happiness. Lebanon's biblical story serves as a reminder that such reliance on worldly power is fleeting. No amount of material wealth can protect us from the consequences of moral decay or shield us from God's judgment. Just as the mighty cities of Tyre and Sidon fell, so too can any individual, nation, or institution that allows pride to take the place of humble dependence on God. Despite the harsh judgments pronounced against Lebanon, the Bible also offers a message of redemption. Even as God warned of destruction for the cities that turned away from Him, he also left open the possibility for repentance and restoration. The prophetic books, particularly Isaiah, speak not only of judgment, but of a future where Lebanon's resources and people would be redeemed and restored to their proper place in God's kingdom. In Isaiah 60 verse 13, Lebanon cedars for trees and pines are described as materials that will beautify the place of God's sanctuary. This passage, which originally referred to the physical restoration of Jerusalem after the Babylonian exile, has also been interpreted as scatologically, pointing to a future time when even the nations once in rebellion against God will be reconciled and brought into the fold of His redemptive plan. Lebanon's transformation from a symbol of human pride to a contributor to God's glory is a powerful example of how God's grace works to redeem even those who have strayed far from His ways. The story of the Syrophoenician woman in the New Testament further emphasizes this redemptive theme. Although she was not part of the covenant people of Israel, her persistent faith led Jesus to grant her request and heal her daughter. This act symbolizes the expansion of God's grace beyond the confines of Israel to include all nations, demonstrating that no one is beyond the reach of God's mercy. 
Just as Jesus' power brought healing to this woman and her child, so too does God offer healing and restoration to all who seek Him, regardless of their past failures or their place in society. In today's world, this message of redemption is especially poignant. We live in a time of great division, where many individuals and nations are caught in cycles of pride, rebellion, and moral decay. Yet the message of Lebanon's redemption is clear. No person or nation is too far gone for God's grace. Redemption is always possible through repentance and faith in God. This is a call for us to turn away from self-reliance, pride, and the idols of modern life, whether they be wealth, power, or fame, and to seek transformation through humility and dependence on God. The story of Lebanon also serves as a powerful reminder of God's sovereignty over all nations and history. Throughout the Bible, God demonstrates that He is not only the God of Israel, but the ruler of all creation. His judgments are not limited to one nation or people, but extend to all the earth. Lebanon's place in biblical prophecy underscores this truth. In Psalm 24 verse 1, we are reminded that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it. The rise and fall of nations are under God's control. While Lebanon once stood as a symbol of pride and rebellion, God used even its downfall to demonstrate His authority and justice. Yet, in His mercy, He also included Lebanon in His redemptive plan, showing that His desire is not simply to punish but to restore. Today, as we witness the ongoing changes in the world, political upheavals, economic crises, and moral challenges, it can be easy to feel uncertain about the future. However, the story of Lebanon reminds us that God is in control of all things. His plan for humanity is not derailed by the pride or rebellion of individuals or nations. Just as he used Lebanon's resources to beautify his sanctuary, he can use any situation for his purposes. This knowledge should bring us peace and confidence, knowing that God's sovereignty extends over every aspect of our lives and the world around us. Lebanon's story in the Bible is not just a historical account. It is a call to action for us today. On a personal level, we are reminded of the dangers of pride and the importance of humility before God. Just as the great cedars of Lebanon, though tall and majestic, were not immune to being cut down, neither are we immune to the consequences of pride and self-reliance. We are called to place our trust in God, recognizing that true strength and prosperity come from Him alone. On a national level, Lebanon's story offers a lesson in the importance of repentance and submission to God's will. Nations, like individuals, are judged not only by their wealth or power, but by their faithfulness to God's principles. The history of Tyre and Sidon serves as a warning to any nation that places its trust in economic or military might while neglecting justice, mercy, and humility. At the same time, Lebanon's eventual restoration and biblical prophecy offers hope that even nations that have strayed far from God can be redeemed and restored if they turn back to Him. Finally, Lebanon's role in the Bible highlights God's inclusive plan of salvation. While Israel was the chosen nation through which God revealed His laws and His covenant, the story of Lebanon demonstrates that God's ultimate plan was always to include all nations in His redemptive work. The healing of the Syrophoenician woman's daughter by Jesus is a foretaste of the gospel spread beyond the Jewish people to encompass all ethnicities and nations. This is a message of great hope for us today. It reminds us that no matter our background, heritage, or past mistakes, we are all invited to participate in God's redemptive plan. The story of Lebanon's transformation from a land associated with pride and idolatry to one that contributes to God's glory mirrors the transformation that is available to all of us through Christ. God's grace extends to everyone. No one is beyond His reach. In conclusion, Lebanon's prophetic history in the Bible serves as both a warning and a promise. It warns us of the dangers of pride and self-reliance, while offering the hope of redemption and transformation through God's grace. As we reflect on Lebanon's story, both in the context of biblical history and in its relevance for today, we are reminded that God is sovereign over all nations, 
and he is always at work inviting us to participate in his plan of redemption. Just as Lebanon was transformed by God's power, so too can we experience personal and national transformation if we humble ourselves and turn to him.